Good afternoon friends, my name is Dylan and I'd like to share with you my experience of the devotion of the Sacred Heart. This is the month of June and that means it's the month of the Sacred Heart in the Catholic Church. And uh, this is a devotion that I never really understood and it started with a, my former parish priest. And um, he would always ask us when we were in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament to consecrate ourselves to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And I never really understood why, but I did it in faith. And one day he invited me and my girlfriend, which is now my wife, to a healing mission in Linasia. And at the end of that day, after we had been praying pretty much the whole day, he, we were invited to a, a home of a specific family who had lost a child due to suicide. And we went there to pray with this family. And by this time I knew that uh, this prayer partner, who my former parish priest had taken with us, was a very gifted man. And um, while we were praying, the priest asked the father of the house, could you please consecrate your family to the sacred heart of Jesus? And as the father of the house did so, this prayer partner uttered some kind of a sense of relief. And afterwards I went to him and I asked him, why, what, what happened? What did you feel? What was happening during that prayer? And he said, as the father was saying this prayer of consecration, consecrating his family, his marriage, his wife, his children, there was some heavy weight in the house that had lifted. Something had lifted. There was some dark presence. There was some really oppressive presence that instantly disappeared. And I could tell as I was listening to him that this man was sincere. And at this point, after praying with him for a whole day, I really knew that these gifts were genuine. It was real. And he was so humble about it. And um, my faith in, the, in, the, in, in that devotion of the Sacred Heart and my faith in prayer, my faith in praying together as a family, my faith in speaking these simple words um, of giving oneself and one's family to God, it just became alive. And ever since then, I am, I am now a married man, I'm a father, and I don't hesitate on a daily basis to consecrate myself and my family to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And my wife, have, my wife and I has, have even chosen St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, who is the chosen instrument of God through which this devotion was brought into the world, of course, many, many years ago. And we have chosen her as a patron saint for our marriage, together with many other patron saints. And we believe in this, we trust in this devotion. And I believe there are many other people out there who have had experiences with, with, with this devotion of the Sacred Heart. And I'm sharing this with you to urge you. Um, do not underplay or underestimate these devotions that we have in the church, whether it be the Sacred Heart or the Immaculate Heart of Mary or the devotion to the uh, Divine Mercy or just uh, the Rosary devotion itself. Um, we tend to think we're talking to a, a wall. We, think, we tend to think that perhaps there is no one out there listening. We tend to think the church makes these things up, which is not the case. And I have discovered that in my own faith journey. And this is something I wanted to share with you. And Perhaps to close off, I'd like to share just um, a personal theological reflection that I have come to. Um, I came across the Eucharistic Miracles, which you might, might have read about. If you haven't, please do Google it. Uh, the Eucharistic mir uh, Miracles in which our very own Pom Pope Francis was, was involved in, uh, one of the most recent ones, before he became the Pope. And in these miracles, to cut a long story short, um, upon investigating it scientifically, it was found that the consecrated bread had turned miraculously into actual human tissue and upon further investigation they found that it's not just human tissue it is tissue of the human heart and so if you and I think about this as Catholics or for those of us who are Catholic we receive that body and that blood of Christ and many times we receive it without any faith thinking it probably is just bread or a symbol of the body of Christ it probably is just wine or a symbol of the blood of Christ and very often we learn in the church, in our priests, and our bishops, and our catechists, they teach us, they say, no, we as Catholics believe that this is really the flesh of Jesus. Jesus spoke in John, I think it's John chapter 6, he said, the, the bread that I will give is my flesh. He said, the bread that I will give is my flesh. And at the, at the Last Supper, he said, this is my body. Not it's a symbol of, not it's a sign of, this is. And so in my own reflection, I was thinking, with this Eucharistic miracles where it was proven in a few of them that this consecrated bread had turned into the, the tissue of human heart, that not only affirms that 
it is really the real flesh of Jesus, but it also says it's not just the flesh of Jesus, it's the heart. It's the specifically, it's the heart of Jesus. So when you go to communion, Jesus is giving you out of love. He's giving you his very heart. And as we often say in English, I love you with my heart. I love you with all my heart. And so maybe we can, we can see Jesus at that time of communion standing there, perhaps in the person of the Christ, of, of, Christ, of, of, of Christ, as we say, in persona Christi, the priest being there in the person of Christ. We can picture that priest giving us this host as Jesus giving it to us and saying, here, this is my flesh. This is the flesh of my heart, which I give you that you may have life you may have life whoever does not eat my flesh and drink my blood does not have life in them and so my dear Catholic friends um, our faith is a mystery but it is also at the same time beautiful and God allows these personal encounters God allows these moments in your personal journey of faith where he he makes these things real and he makes it come alive and so I would urge you, explore it. Read about the Eucharistic miracles. Read more about the Sacred Heart devotion. Read more about all the devotions in the church. Try to study and see where did they come from. You know, if our fellow friends who aren't Catholic encounter us, let's share this with them with love. And, and let's hear what they have to say. Let's hear about their experiences. And uh, this is the way in which our faith becomes alive. And so I urge you, pray, but do not, do not only pray. Do not only go to Mass blindly. Do not just be a dry Catholic or a blind Catholic I'm um, just going with emotions try to understand your faith and share it share it with the world